good morning students uh, welcome back to session 6 of banach spaces class so in this class let us discuss about uh, the bonded uh, sets and uh, uh, the transformation which maps bonded sets onto bonded sets so uh, suppose we have a transformation t from a norm linear space x to the norm linear space y okay then suppose uh, then t maps t maps bonded sets of x bonded sets into bonded sets bonded sets into okay so for this so the problem is here so if t is a transformation from x to y then t is bonded if and only if t maps bonded sets into bonded sets okay first suppose t is bonded t is bonded linear transformation if t is a bonded linear transformation by definition you know that norm of t of x is less than or equal to k times into norm of x this holds for every x belongs to x so now we need to show it maps uh, bonded sets onto bonded sets suppose s be a bonded subset of uh, x s be a bonded subset of x then we need to show t of s is bonded okay so now t is bonded means what by definition norm of t of x is less than or equal to uh, k times into norm of x this is t is bonded and s is bonded means norm of x is less than or equal to some say k dash into k dash times for every x belongs to s so it follows from this that norm of t of x is less than or equal to k into norm of x is less than or equal to k dash k dash for every x belongs to s this implies norm of t of x less than or k into k times k dash means so this is again a constant so norm of t of x is less than or k into k dash for every x belongs to s means now the element t of x belongs to t of s therefore norm of that element is less than or equal to k means t of s is bonded t of s is bonded so conversely let t of s be bonded conless t of s be bonded and uh, for every bonded set s in x say you take s to be some bonded set say set of all x belongs to x such that norm of x is less than or equal to 1 this is you know that it is a unit sphere which is a bonded set then what will happen then since t is uh, what will happen then norm of t of x is less than or equal to k for every x belongs to s because we assume that t of s is bonded but t of s is bonded means norm of t of x is less than or equal to k for every x belongs to s now we need to show t is bonded so for this let x belongs to x be arbitrary okay then if x belongs to x is arbitrary then x by norm of x as norm how much it has a norm 1 so this element belongs to s okay then by definition so what will happen t of x by norm of x so according to our assumption t of x by norm of x is less than or equal to k because x by norm of x belongs to s this implies by using linearity property 1 by norm of x into norm of t of x is less than or equal to k or norm of t of x is less than or equal to k times into norm of x this holds for every x belongs to x because x is an arbitrary element we have taken therefore norm of t of x is less than or equal to k times into norm of x means what you can say t is a bonded map t is a bonded map okay this is one of the simple result and it's interesting also now so let's consider another important result say so, suppose x and y be uh, norm linear spaces and t be a linear transformation of x into y x into y so if m is the null space of x if m is the null space of x null space of x 
then T induces a linear transformation T dash of x by m into y T, T induces a linear map T dash of x by m into y such that norm of T of T dash is same as norm of T norm of T dash is same as norm of T means if x and y are non-linear spaces and T is a linear map of x into y and if m is the null space of x then t dash introduce then t induces a linear map t dash from x by m into y such that norm of t dash is equal to norm of t so this is a natural map right this is always exists this type of maps that we have proved in uh, s vector spaces as well as in ring theory also so now m is the null space means how do you define now m is null space means it contains set of all x belongs to x such that norm such that t of x is equal to 0 means it contains those vectors which mapped onto 0 element of y ok. Now already we know that x by m is a uh, non-linear space ok. x by m is a non-linear space with the norm of a coset is norm of a coset is what norm of coset x by x plus m is so infimum of norm of x plus m where m belongs to m this already you know it ok. So, I am defining now the transformation T dash from x by m to y by, by T dash of x plus m T dash of x plus m. So, it should be an element of y that element I taken to be the image of x which is in x it is equal to image of x which is in x ok. So, definitely this mapping is well defined mapping and now we will show this mapping T dash is linear. So, T dash is linear is very simple. So, I take uh, any two elements say x1 plus m, x2 plus m be any two arbitrary elements of x by m and alpha beta be scalars, alpha and comma beta be scalars. Then T dash of alpha into x1 plus m plus beta into x2 plus m is equal to what will happen t dash of say alpha x1 directly I am writing alpha x1 plus beta x2 plus m alpha x1 plus beta x2 plus m now uh, x1 and x2 are elements of x and since x is a linear space alpha x1 plus beta x2 belongs to x. So, this is an element of x plus x by m. So, this is equal to by definition of a mapping of t dash. So, this is equal to t of alpha x1 plus beta x2. But since t is already a linear map, so alpha into t of x1 plus beta into t of x2. So therefore, this is equal to alpha into t dash of alpha 1 sorry x1 plus uh, m plus beta into uh, t dash of x2 plus m. So, thus we have proved t dash of alpha into x1 plus m plus beta into x2 plus m is equal to alpha into t dash of x1 plus m plus beta into t dash of x2 plus m. Therefore, t dash is linear map. Therefore, t dash is linear. Now, the other condition we need to prove is now is the norm of t dash whether it will be equal to norm of t say what is norm of t of t dash by definition norm of t dash is so this supremum of norm of s yes, t dash of the element is here x plus m t dash of x plus m where x is an element of x and norm of x plus m is less than or equal to 1 ok this is the norm of t. So, this is equal to what supremum of norm of t dash of x plus m is t of x where x belongs to x and what is norm of x plus m norm of x plus m is infimum of m belongs to m infimum of m belongs to m norm of x plus m norm of x plus m which is less than or equal to 1. So, now supremum of norm of t of x where x belongs to m and infimum of these numbers is less than or equal to 1 implies. So, we can directly take supremum of norm of uh, say now t of x 
plus t of m because t of m is 0 I can add any 0 to any number t of m is 0 because m belongs to m means t of m is 0 it is the null space. So, this is equal to uh, x belongs to x m belongs to m. So, infimum of this one means I can take for all the vectors itself. So, norm of x plus m is less than or equal to 1 ok. So, this is equal to supremum of norm of t of x plus m because t is linear already. So, x belongs to x, m belongs to m means what you can say directly x plus m uh, belongs to x, x plus m belongs to x such that norm of x plus m is less than equal to 1 because look here x belongs to x, m belongs to m and m is a subspace of x means x plus m is again an element of x. So, norm of x is less than equal to 1. This is looking like supremum of norm of t of y whereby belongs to m such that norm of y is less than equal to 1 is what by definition of norm of t this is norm of t. Thus, we have proved norm of t dash is same as norm of t ok. So, if x and y are non-linear spaces and t is a mapping from x to y and if m is the null space of t then t induces a linear transformation t dash of x by m and to into y such that norm of t dash is same as norm of t ok. So, this is one uh, important theorem. So, let us define another important definition. Suppose x and y are non-linear spaces. Then a topological isomorphism, a topological, you know what is meant by an isomorphism, a topological isomorphism of x into y, a topological a topological isomorphism of x into y is a one to one linear transformation is a one to one linear transformation of x into y a one to one linear transformation say t of x into y such that t and t inverse are continuous on their respective domains such that t and t inverse are continuous on their respective domains means if x and y are non-linear space, a topological isomorphism is a mapping which is 1 1 linear transformation t from x into y such that t and t inverse are continuous, t is continuous on x and t inverse is continuous on y means t and t inverse are continuous on their respective domains. Also we say that these two x and y are topologically isomorphic, we say x is topologically isomorphic to y if there exists a topological isomorphism from x into y. So, we say x and y are topological isomorphic if there exists a topological isomorphism of x onto y ok, x onto y. So, now say uh, <coughs> suppose next definition, suppose x is a, a non-linear space, suppose x being made a normally uh, suppose x is a linear space. Suppose x been made a norm linear space uh, by using two norms say uh, as already said may, uh, as number of norms can be any number of norms can be defined on x. Suppose norm 1 and norm 2 be any two norms defined on x ok. Then these two norms are said to be equivalent written by norm of x 1 is equivalent to uh, norm of x2 if and only if when you say they are equivalent if and only if they generate the same topology they generate the same topology on x. So, norm 1 is now equivalent to norm 2 if and only if they generate the same topology on x they generate the same topology means what. So, topology being topology being exist are uh, constructed using the metric. So, you know that so, uh, the metric can be defined as d of x y is norm of x minus y ok. So, this norm introdu induces a metric, this in turn induces a topology, metric always you know that from uh, topology that this metric induces a topology ok. The topology generated by this metric is called the metric topology ok, ok or in some days. So, that is why we say norm 1 is equivalent to norm 2 if or only if they generate the same topology on x ok. Now, based on this result we are going to prove one important theorem say suppose uh, 
uh, x is a nonlinear space. Suppose two norms norm 1 and norm 2 are defined on x. Then these norms are equivalent if and only if then norm 1 is equivalent to norm 2 if and only if okay. Uh, there exist positive numbers or real constants such that m times into norm of x1 is less than or equal to norm of x2 which is less than or equal to big m times norm of x with respect to norm 1. This folds for every x belongs to x means then norm 1 and norm 2 are equivalent if and only if there exist positive constants m and m such that m into norm of x1 is less than or equal to norm of x2 less than or equal to m times into norm of x1. So, now say let us uh, consider this. Uh, suppose uh, x being uh, say x1 I will denote with x with norm 1. Say x1 is the same space x with norm 1. Say x2 is the same space say x with say norm 2 x1 is the so x with norm 1, x2 is the x with norm 2. Suppose we are, you define a mapping t from x1 to x2 by t of x is equal to x. You define a mapping t from x2, x1 to x2 by t of x is equal to x. Then definitely t, this is a identity map, definitely this is linear. Okay. Now, if this is uh, identity map, what will happen? Then t inverse exists definitely this mapping is on to and so t inverse exists and t inverse is a mapping from where to where t is a t inverse is a mapping from x2 to x1 given by t inverse of x is also same as x t inverse is a mapping from x2 to x1 given by t inverse of x is equal to x itself. Now t is bounded now t is bounded if and only if what will happen now t is bounded if and only if uh, t is uh, sorry t is uh, continuous sorry t is continuous uh, continuous if and only if t is bounded in this you know that t is bounded if and only if t is bounded means norm of t of x t of x lies in norm 2 okay t of x less than or equal to m times into norm of x1 for every x belongs to x. This happens if and only if norm of t of x is x itself norm of x2 less than or equal to m times into norm of x1. So, this holds for every x belongs to x. Norm of x2 is less than or equal to m times into norm of x1 for every x belongs to x you call this as 1. Again t inverse is continuous again t inverse is continuous implies what? t inverse is continuous if and only if t inverse is bounded, t inverse is bounded, t inverse is bounded, t inverse is bounded in happens only if norm of t inverse of x, norm of t inverse of x where it lies, it lies in uh, x1, so norm 1 less than or equal to say k times into norm of x2 for every x belongs to here x2, x2 means x itself, right. So, this happens if and only if norm of t inverse of x means norm of x 1 is less than or equal to k times into norm of x 2 ok understand this. So, you transfer this to k here. So, this is 1 by k into norm of x less than or equal to norm of x 2 ok. This 1 by k you take to be little m small m. So, m into norm of x 1 is less than norm of x2. So, you call this as number 2. So, you see 1, 1 is norm of x2 is less than equal to m times norm of x1, the right side of the required inequality and the second one is m into norm of x1 is less than equal to norm of x2, norm of x2. So, what you can see therefore, t and t inverse are, now look here, now t and t inverse are continuous, t and t inverse are continuous. If and only if you know that t and t inverse are continuous means t is continuous if the inverse image of the open set in x2 is open in x1 and t inverse is continuous means inverse image of a open set in x1 is open in x2 by definition of a open set ok by definition of continuity in topology. So, you know that uh, t and t inverse are continuous if and only if the inverse image of 
inverse image of the open sets uh, in x2 and x1 under t and t inverse are open in uh, x1 and x2. Inverse images of open sets are open means what will happen if and only open sets in x1 and x2 are the same open sets in x1 and x2 are the same. If open sets in x1 and x2 are the same means norm 1 and norm 2 induces the same topology on x means norm 1 and r 2 induces the same topology. If therefore, from the above discussion, this discussion we conclude that norm 1 and norm 2 are equivalent when they are equivalent if and only if they generate the same topology. You know that if they generate the same topology on x. If they generate the same topology means what will happen t and t inverse are continuous. If t and t inverse are continuous means just now we have proved if t is continuous then norm of x2 is less than or equal to m times into norm of x and, and t inverse is continuous means m times into norm of x1 is less than or equal to norm of x2. Therefore, therefore we will have m into norm of x1 less than or equal to norm of x2 less than or equal to m times into norm of x1. Okay? This is a interesting uh, proof. Okay. Okay. Next let us discuss another important theorem. So, this is uh, look at this on a finite dimensional norm linear space all norms are equivalent on a finite dimensional norm linear space on a finite dimensional norm linear space all norms are all norms are equivalent equivalent so let us take this suppose x is of finite dimension say n which is finite suppose x is of finite dimension which is n n definitely positive okay and suppose it has finite dimension means it has finite number of basis elements since we have fixed the dimension of x to be n so n there are n number of basis elements say you take e1 e2 etc up to en be a basis for x if this is a basis for x then from linear algebra you know that if any element x in x can be written as a linear combination of these elements say i write in a summation notation summation i is equal to 1 to n say alpha i e i what are alpha is alpha is are the scalars every element in x can be written as a linear combination of these alpha is. So, so you call this as number 1. Now, you know that uh, zeroth norm norm of x 0 is equal to norm of x 0 is equal to maximum of alpha i. So, this is called the zeroth norm. So, norm of x 0 is equal to maximum of alpha i definitely it is a norm on x norm on x. This norm is called the zeroth norm. This is called zeroth norm. So, here what we show that all norms are equivalent to zeroth norm. Okay? This is the standard norm zeroth norm. So, we show that all, all other norms are equivalent to this norm, this norm. So, for this I will take the arbitrary norm say let norm of x denotes be any norm on be any norm on x be any norm on x then this norm and this norm is equivalent means what you have to show from the pre previous result m times into norm of x not less than or equal to norm of x less than or equal to big m times norm of x not for every x belongs to x by the previous theorem so these are equivalent if and only if so we said um, the any two norm, the norm 1 and norm 2 are equivalent if and only if there exist positive constants and uh, such that we have proved the previous result. Okay? So, now, now we here it is norm 1 and this is like norm 2. So, m times into norm of x naught less than or equal to norm of x less than or equal to m times into norm of x. So, we need to prove. Now, let us prove. So, one by one, by one. say now say for, for any x belongs to x for any x belongs to x we have norm of x is what norm of x is norm of x means summation i is equal to 1 to n alpha i e i right. 
So, but this is less than or equal to definitely summation i is equal to 1 to n mod of alpha i into norm of e i. This you know. So, now summation i is equal to 1 to n norm of e i, it is a scalar norm of e i is there on real numbers. So, I will take that m to be that number summation i is equal to 1 to n norm of e i because norm of e i is a real number. Then what will happen? Norm of x is less than or equal to m times into m times into. So, this is what? Summation i is equal to 1 to n mod alpha i. So, definitely this is less than or equal to maximum of alpha i. Maximum alpha is nothing but what? Nor x naught or x naught. Therefore, norm of x is less than or equal to m times into norm of x for every x belongs to x. So, we have proved the right side of this the requirement which is 2, the requirement is 2. So, we have proved the right side of this term norm of x is less than or equal to m times into norm of x, x naught for every x belongs to x. Now, we need to prove m times into norm of x naught is less norm of x naught is less than or equal to norm of x. We need to prove the left side inequality. So, although it uh, looking like a very simple task, but it needs lot of work to prove m times into norm of x naught is less than or equal to norm of x. It is a lengthy process. Let us uh, discuss one by one step. Okay. So, now <coughs> say uh, uh, we prove the second step uh, the m times into uh, norm of x naught is uh, less than or equal to norm of x. Hmm? So, we prove this by induction on the dimension of x. So, suppose we have a dimension of x is n, we prove this by method of induction. Suppose dimension of x is 1, dimension of x is 1, dimension of x is 1 means what is the e 1 e itself is the basis elements, e 1 itself is the basis elements. Therefore, x belongs to x implies x is equal to alpha 1 into e 1, alpha 1 into e 1 and so that norm of x is uh, mod norm of alpha 1 e 1. So, this is equal to mod of alpha 1 into norm of e 1 again as I said. So, this is equal to uh, uh, norm of e 1 is some constant I will I can take right I can take m to be so say norm of e 1 because it is a fixed num real number and mod of alpha is means maximum if you take this is there is a only one value. So, this is simply by definition 0 of 0 0th norm it will be norm of x naught therefore, what you can say m into norm of x naught is equal to norm of x means we proved the required thing required thing for n is equal to 1. Now, say assume that uh, the result uh, which we are call it as uh, which may we call it as the 3 equation 3 is true for all uh, uh, dimensions su uh, such that dimension of x is less than or equal to n minus 1. Okay. up to uh, all subspaces having dimension less than or equal to n minus 1 the result is true. So, let m be a dimension uh, uh, n minus 1 say uh, m be uh, dimension n minus 1 means it has a generated by it has a basis elements say uh, suppose m is the subspace generated by this uh, n number of n minus sorry n minus 1 number of basis elements. Okay. Now, definitely m is a subspace of x, m is a subspace of x and dimension of uh, m is uh, dimension of m is n minus 1. Okay. So, by we have by our induction hypothesis we have assumed that the result is true for uh, all dimensions up to n minus 1. So, according to that so norm of norm this norm is equal to 0 th norm on m definitely on m. Now, let y n be any uh, Cauchy sequence in M, y n be any Cauchy sequence, Cauchy sequence. If y n is a Cauchy sequence in M, then uh, Cauchy sequence, so we need to say this is with respect to the norm, this norm. Since norm 1 and S norm 2 
are equivalent on m means we have assumed that the result is true for m so norm 1 and norm 2 is norm norm uh, sorry norm and this norm not uh, norm 0 is uh, equivalent on m so this is a cauchy sequence with respect to this norm means this is also a yn is also a cauchy sequence with respect to the zeroth norm so then you consider the uh, j term of this sequence what is j term that it denote bit by yj yj1 is what so it's a linear combination of basis elements only so i'll index this as alpha 1 corresponding to j into e1 plus alpha 2 corresponding to j s into e2 and so on what is the last element alpha n minus 1 corresponding to j ej minus 1 so this is the jth element since yn is a cauchy sequence by definition of a cauchy, a cauchy sequence what will happen norm of yn minus ym tending to 0 as m and n tending to infinity you call this as number say 4 so norm of yn minus ym tends to 0 as n comma m tends to infinity but norm of uh, but norm of yn minus ym with respect to 0 norm because it is uh, Cauchy sequence with respect to both the norms this is equal to what by definition this is maximum over k this is alpha k n minus alpha k m you know this maximum over k alpha k n minus alpha k m and so what will happen alt now as m tends into infinity maximum of this one means alpha this tends to left hand side tends to 0 as m and n tending to infinity means the right hand side also tends to 0 m as m and n tend to infinity means alpha k n minus alpha k m tends to 0 as m and n as m and n uh, tend to infinity now alpha k s are scalars they either they belongs to real numbers or complex numbers now alpha k n minus alpha k m tends to 0 as m and n tend to infinity means alpha k n becomes a Cauchy sequence of either real numbers or complex numbers but both real numbers the set of real numbers and the set of complex numbers are complete therefore this Cauchy sequence converges in either in R or C say alpha k n converges to say alpha k as n tending to infinity now you construct uh, uh, a vector y such that y is the linear combination of this alpha case so this alpha case you take and you make a linear combination alpha k into e k where k takes the values from k is equal to 1 to n minus 1 definitely what will happen then up to n minus it is linear combination of basis elements of m therefore y belongs to m y belongs to m although also since we are making uh, the linear combination using the converging point therefore definitely y n converges to y okay then y n converges to y with respect to the zeroth norm so with respect to the zeroth norm it converges but if it converges to with respect to zeroth norm means it is also converges with respect to the standard norm which we return like this okay now we have taken a Cauchy sequence in m and this converges means m is complete therefore we have proved that the subspace generated by the n minus 1 uh, basis elements is uh, complete but uh, from real analysis you know that every complete subspace uh, every complete subspace uh, of a nonlinear space x is closed every complete space of a nonlinear space is x is closed therefore m is closed therefore m is closed in x m is closed in x now m is closed means then uh, you take the nth basis elements e n plus m and we make a set so this is uh, what e n plus say some z where z belongs to m e n plus m is the set e n plus z where z belongs to m now m is closed and definitely the singleton set e n is closed therefore sum of two closed sets it is closed okay or in the words 
so def you know that en plus m is always isomorphic to m itself en plus m is always you know that it is isomorphic to m therefore since en plus m is closed uh, sorry um, yeah uh, since en plus m <coughs> since m is closed m is closed en plus m is also closed en plus m is closed means what en plus m complement its complement is open en plus co complement is open now so uh, this is open we show that we assert that means or we declare that uh, 0 is not an element of en plus m we assert that 0 is not an element of uh, en plus m suppose because look here if 0 belongs to en plus m then 0 can be written as en plus uh, basis elements of m this is say beta 1 e 1 beta 2 e 2 and so on beta n minus 1 e n minus 1 which is a contradiction because 0 can be written as some this is a non-zero element e n is a basis element means it should be non-zero so 0 can be written as linear combination of a non-zero element which is a contradiction therefore 0 does not lies in e n plus m 0 does not lies in e n plus 1 means certainly 0 belongs to its complement what is the complement e n plus m whole complement e n plus 1 e n plus m whole complement which is a open set open set means 0 becomes a interior point of e n plus m e n plus m 0 becomes a interior point of 0 plus m means by definition of interior point there exists some open ball say 0 comma with the radius uh, say c n which is wholly contained in e n plus m complement arrange and this so since 0 is an interior point so there exists an open ball uh, at that I denote it by s of 0 comma c n which is wholly contained in e n plus 1 e n plus m complement thus if x belongs to thus for any thus for any x belongs to e n plus m e n plus m what will happen norm of x is definitely greater than or equal to 0 sorry norm of x is greater than or equal to c n because if x belongs to uh, uh, e n plus m e n plus m norm of x is greater than or equal to c n right norm of x belongs to uh, because this open ball if it lies here x lies here what will happen norm of x is less than or equal to uh, norm of x is less than or equal to c n but since it is lies in the complement means x belongs to c n plus m implies norm of x definitely greater than or equal to c n this implies what norm of x means is in e n plus m means it is the linear combination e 1 e n plus alpha 1 e 1 and so on alpha n minus 1 e n minus 1 is greater than or equal to c n you may call this by the number 6 right so in alpha n so if alpha n is a non-zero number if alpha n is any non-zero number so replacing alpha i by alpha i by alpha n then what will happen this implies norm of e n plus i replace uh, alpha i by alpha i by alpha n means alpha 1 by alpha n in alpha 1 by sorry alpha uh, n into e 1 plus alpha 2 by alpha n into e 2 and so on the last term is alpha n minus 1 by alpha n into e n minus 1 which is greater than or equal to c n ok now so this implies uh, norm of so multiplying throughout by denominator c n so this gives alpha 1 e 1 alpha 2 e 2 etc alpha n e n is greater than or equal to what mod of alpha n into c n mod of alpha into c n ok so we have arrived at the expression like norm of alpha 1 e 1 alpha 2 e 2 etc alpha n e n is greater than or equal to mod of alpha n mod of alpha n into say c n c n now suppose uh, we have not taken uh, m uh, 
uh, which is generated by the n by n s band basis, ele basis element. Suppose we have taken uh, the uh, space generated by uh, the n elements say e 1, e 2, etcetera e n itself. So, suppose you are not taken up to e n minus 1, but we are taken up to e n. Then one, the, the only thing is we are taken the extra element. So, then what will happen? Say uh, it, it is clear from the above discussion that there exists some c i positive, there exists some c i positive such that norm of alpha 1 e 1, alpha 2 e 2, etcetera, alpha n e n is so norm of alpha 1 e 1, alpha 2 e 2, etcetera, alpha n e n is greater than or equal to say c i into mod of alpha i c i into mod of alpha i this takes for all values 1 to etcetera up to n elements ok this takes up to n elements what will happen then then uh, what will happen for any x uh, belongs to x say, say a summation i is equal to 1 to n alpha i into e i norm of x is what norm of x is equal to norm of alpha 1 e 1 plus alpha 2 e 2 etcetera alpha n e n. So, but this is greater than or equal to what minimum of I will take minimum over i c i into maximum over i mod of alpha i because look here. So, we have shown that norm of alpha 1 e 1, alpha 2 e 2, etc. and alpha e n is greater than or equal to C i into mod of alpha i. So, this holds for every i means I will take this holds for minimum of C i and maximum of alpha i also. Okay. This is true for any C i means this is true for the minimum means C 1 also it is must be true and mod of alpha n also must it must be true that is why we taken this is greater than or equal to minimum of C i maximum of alpha i minimum of this is equal to what minimum of C i over i maximum of alpha i means norm of x naught this is the zeroth norm ok. I will take minimum over C i as some m little m. So, m is equal to minimum over i C i then what will happen m times into norm of x naught is less than or equal to what on the left is here it is norm of x ok. So, we have put the left side of the result uh, which we have denoted by some numbers right. So, that we have proved it now ok. So, one side proving the right hand side is very simple task now we have proved the left hand side also thus we have norm of x naught is less than or equal to norm of x which is less than or equal to m times into norm of x naught ok. Therefore, ok all norms are equivalent and a finite dimensional linear space all norms are equivalent ok. This is a very big result and it is interesting also. Thank you.